Tired of your t-shirt sleeves blowing in the wind? Each of these arm exercises hits maximum muscle fibers to spark the growth you're after and proves any piece of kit. In the right hands and in the right arm workout has gun toady potential to build bigger, thicker arms. In today's video, we are going to show you the 10 exercises to build bigger arms. Without further ado, let's begin. Barbell or Easy Bar Curl Why it's on the list The standard shoulder width curl engages the short and long heads of the biceps evilly. You can alter grip width to slightly change the emphasis. Wide to target the short head. Narrow for the long head. You can really pile the weight and you don't have to sit there endlessly working one arm at a time. How many more reasons do you need? If you're only going to do one biceps exercise, make it this one. In your workout, hit your heavy curls at the beginning of your biceps workout when you can really challenge yourself with weight. For a bit more of a strength stimulus, choose a weight you can handle for about 6 to 8 reps or even a classic size and strength rep range like 5 by 5. Cable Curl why it's on the list. This movement seems a lot like the standing barbell curl at first glance. After all, they're both bilateral movements in which you take a shoulder width underhand grip on the bar. What makes it different is that, like all of the best muscle building cable exercises, the angle of loading gives you constant tension on the muscle through the full range of motion. In your workout, because it's fairly similar to the barbell curl, pick one or the other. If you're doing it first in your workout, Go fairly heavy and use a challenging weight for 6 to 10 reps per set. If you choose to do it later in the workout, go for 8 to 12 or more per set. Dumbbell Curl Why it's on the list? Is this really any different than a barbell curl? That's up to you. Sure, you can do the moves in basically the same way in the same workout, but we don't recommend it. The real value of dumbbell curls is that they can be done a number of ways, standing or seated with both arms or alternating, rotating your wrists into Zotman curls to work on your fearsome forearms or twisting that pinky up to focus purely on the bis. In short, you have options in your workout. If you're doing these after barbell or cable curls, emphasize the difference by performing Zotmans or take bilateral seated curls to fatigue and then extend the set by switching to unilateral curls. If you feel your reps getting sloppy, really hammer the negatives. It's been shown that the eccentric focused reps can produce higher levels of force than the concentric, even when you're fatigued. Chin up. Why it's on the list? Ever done a set of max rep chins? Then you know the biceps are working seriously hard during this move. Both pull-ups, overhand grip, and chin-ups, underhand grip, have a high degree of elbow flexion, but research has shown that chin-ups work the biceps significantly more. Are sets of 8 to 12 reps too easy? Add weight. Too hard? Use assistance. Too uncomfortable on your wrists or elbows? Alternate with a neutral, palms facing in, or cambered grip, or perform them on rings. Grip giving out? Wear wrist straps. In your workout, if you train back with biceps, this exercise could make a great bridge movement between the two body parts for 3 to 4 sets of 8 to 12 reps. It can also be your primary upper back and biceps move in a home workout if you take a few sets to failure, like in strength coach Paul Carter's program, Jacked at Home. Bodyweight muscle building workouts. Reverse grip barbell row. Why it's on the list. Some lifters speak reverently of the bent over row as the fourth power lift. Whether you agree or not, this is a back focus movement in which you can go very heavy. And with a reverse grip, the biceps are heavily engaged. It's not really the kind of exercise you do on a biceps-only day, so it makes a good bridge between the back and the biceps in your workout, included in your back routine, or as a bridge exercise when training back and biceps together. Go fairly heavy and train in the classic muscle building rep range of 8 to 12 reps. Hammer Curl Why it's on the list? Curls with a palms facing or neutral grip do more than just hit the biceps, they also heavily recruit the brachialis, a muscle that doesn't get measured on EMG studies because it's beneath the biceps. Because it's not as obvious a move as, say, a barbell curl, it often gets undeservedly skipped on arm day. Why should you care? Increasing the girth of the brachialis can raise your biceps from below, making your entire arm larger. Another reason, 
They were Chris Hemsworth's go to curl to transform into Thor. In your workout, hammer curls are usually done in the middle or at the end of a workout in a classic rep range of 8 to 12 reps. Experiment with isometric holds to create a deep burn that even the pros fear. Incline curl. Why it made the list? What's the difference between curling at 90 degrees and 45? More than you think. The incline curl elongates the biceps and increases the stretch at the start of the movement. Theoretically, this helps you target the long head and build the so-called biceps peak. In your workout, this is detail work, not the main course. Perform these after an exercise like standing curls, in which both biceps heads are targeted with a heavyweight. Concentration curl. Why it's on the list? Hey. There's a reason the concentration curl fares so well on muscle activation studies. One reason is that the torso position limits shoulder involvement, but another might be the mind-muscle connection many people report experiencing with this move. There is actually some emerging evidence surrounding the ability of the mind-muscle connection to help increase muscle growth. In your workout, this is best treated as a light, strict move to finish off your biceps when you're already somewhat fatigued. Pick a weight just heavy enough that you're failing around 10 to 12 reps. Preacher Curl Why it's on the list? There are many versions of the Preacher Curl, and every serious physique builder has their fave. Whatever version you do, you'll get a serious pump, particularly if you have a quality pre-workout or pump supplement coursing through your bloodstream at the time. In fact, this old-school peak builder can be nearly enough for an entire biceps workout perhaps with something like hammer curls added to it. In your workout, since your arms are against a bench, it's a very strict movement that doesn't allow a lot of cheating. Hence, this movement is best done toward the latter half of your workout for at least 8 to 12 reps per set. Drag curl. Why it's on a list? In contrast to traditional barbell curls, where you keep your elbows pinned at your sides, you'll actually push them backward, keeping the bar close to your torso as you bring it up. This reduces the range of motion, so don't expect to take it up very high. Because the bar moves vertically up and down, it can also be done effectively on a Smith machine. This is a favorite biceps building hack of Chris Gethin in his popular 8-week hardcore daily video trainer. In your workout, you can program this just like any other barbell curl, heavy in the beginning or lighter in the middle to end of your workout. Want to make it extra tough? Extend the negative portion of the rep to 3 to 5 seconds per rep. Repeat for 5 to 8 reps, perhaps having a spotter help you with the concentric lifting portion as needed. So guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up for more interesting content. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.